Hi folks, I'm Martin Beer and I've invented a game Euborea. Spell, eggs and loot. And actually, that's what it is about. You have a hero starting in the nowhere in the middle. From scratch, he has only few skills. And he tried to discover the world together with his competitors, getting encounters in the wake, getting loot. And with the loot he can buy better or purchase better skill cards, getting better battle cards. And with the battle cards you can again reach out for more and da more dangerous encounters, getting more loot. In the end, everything will be counted on this street of fame. And the best one is about to win. Sometimes it's possible that somebody else has some other winning condition. So you are never sure how you can make this. You are invited. Let's go to the details. Currently, we have a heavy raining outside, so don't be disturbed about that. We want to focus on the game and continue with that. The game is played rather traditionally in rounds. Everybody, when his turn is, have to move first. Might discover new tiles, for example. Going to somewhere and have then some action somewhere. Here in this case, it's the mountains and he gets some encounter. In this case, a line with value of two and with sly capability. You get some advantages and some bonus and some malus. But maybe we have to tell a bit about the skills as well. In the beginning you have only two skills, that's not much, but it gives you some abilities to combine cards which you have in the beginning at hand. And normally you have these not completely in hand. You have a draw pile and have only three cards where you can operate with. Normally, you are permitted only to play one, but with this one here, you can combine something. To that, you want to get additional loot, maybe. Maybe you get by this, if you, if you succeed. Three loot here with that, is shown here. But you have to also focus on your targets you have. You have secret targets, and in the wake of the game, you have to drop two of them, remaining only with one. As a matter of fact, you don't need to fulfill these targets, but they give some extra boost. There are other cards as well, some common targets, which everybody can share, but need to fulfill as well, well, and which give in the end of the day some additional victory points on the road of fame, on the street of fame here when you're going forward. The speed is defined by the street of fame, in the beginning you have only two steps, later you have a reach of three, four, and in the final status five, so you are accelerating over the wake of the game. Then afterwards the next one is with, uh, going with his turn and doing by himself some encounters, have some, some conditions what happens. We have seen already that you have a distance which you can walk. It's a reach. But we have not talked about the situation how to get back your battle cards. Normally with other deck building games you get your battle cards back when you are done with the, with the draw pile. But in this case it's not the case. You have to schedule how to get it back. You can either go to the village or the sanctum and you get all cards back. Or you can rest but then you lose one complete round and you don't want to do this. So you can walk shorter and get cards back. Or you have to manage how to do with that. Another item I've not shown here is a visiting marker. The visiting marker makes sure that when you are not satisfied with some result, you cannot directly go back. If you go to a location, you have to put your visit marker in. And before you have not visited another location, you are not permitted to use it again. So if I'm not happy with what I got in the, in the village, I cannot just simply step in and out and repeat the result. This prevents that you have multiple choices and multiple accesses to one situation. A special situation here, just to see some details of a turn. I'm doing first my movement, two steps, into the woods. I have no special capability. Ah, that's not true. I have the possibility to drop one hand card and draw a new one if I like. I have three cards in hand. 
one defensive, one fire, and one sly. And as I'm in the woods, I get an encounter and see, oh, it's a boar, uh huh, a wild tusker. He's also sly, and he has a strength of two. Some bonus, and one malus is existing on that, and if I get the, the reward, it's two uh, loot which I get. With that situation, I'm to about to look how can I win against this Tusker. If I put on this card only, he will snatch me away because I have only a one, he has a two, it's the same, so it's not a possibility. This fire card is good because I get a bonus of one, but the Tusker is still on the same level and also if I do it that way, it's even inferior, I have a one, he has a two and I have a minus one, he will put me away in nothing. So I have to combine cards here. And what I can do is I can check out what possibilities I have here with these skill cards. I have the possibility to support one defensive card of another one with a value of another one, or I can add two cards with value one and take one of the leading, which is the possibility to get me ahead. I have also the possibility to drop one card of my hand and to draw one new, as I know this is a defensive card, I will get not, in, not a better situation. So I have to manage with that. I can choose to do it that way. I can try to do a fire supported by one additional, so I get a two plus one by the bonus is three. I got it. I have also the possibility to do it other way around. I can do it with a sly. The sly one supported by one. Oh no, that's not true. It gets only a two, which is equal. Then I will lose only two cards and will not get the loot. The worst situation is if I do something with the defensive card ahead because it gets don't get me where I want to and I have to drop all of the cards, letting me losing this encounter. That's actually some example how I can combine these cards. You have to look where you get bonus from and where not. After a while, your hero will have some loot, and if he comes back to the village or the sanctum, which is not discovered until now, he can take some of his loot, put it away, and achieve some new cards out of the display to improve his abilities. In this case, I choose water A and defensive B because this matches to my targets I have for the further game. And here, I get two new possibilities, two new abilities. I get Desert More Rich, two of that, and I get the ability to add a card to a water card. Currently I have no water cards, but with these both cards I get a lot of cards. It's mentioned here I get two defensive two, one water one, two defensive one, but I have to drop also three cards, which gives me the ability to, or the possibility to reduce my number of cards to keep more the effective one, uh, probable to have them uh, drawn. Here I get two water cards, one normal offensive card, and I have to drop one card. So I have to drop four cards of that, and I get new cards by this one here. I have to see. And now I have to consider out of my com the complete set of cards which one I like to put away. In this case, I would, for example, drop one card of the offensive card and maybe the fire because I don't know where to, how to combine and maybe uh, also another defensive card and well, another sly because I don't have any possibilities to use that. So the new set of cards I get is this one here and as you can see I have now better possibilities to get on encounters with that set. I get two cards too. I get three magic cards, one, but this is a good set, for example, to start some advantage, uh, ad advance, sorry, some adventures, adventures in the desert. Additionally, I will get a new task card, the Mausoleum Inn. It's mentioned here below that the Mausoleum come into game. And this is a public uh, card which can everybody fulfill. It gets to the display, and now I have all the possibilities. This is a desert card. I have good cards for desert, so to fulfill some new card. 
One thing I like to show is shortly is also the rock paper scissor principle, which is behind this kind of battling. You see here that this asymmetrical, the offensive and fire is much more existing than water and defensive, and this is more existing than sly and earth. Sly and earth is fighting the defensive and the water, and this is fighting with a bonus towards the offensive and the fire. And this is then with a bonus on this sly and earth. And you can see this also on the battle cards. You get the bonus below here, and you see here the sly got, uh, got the bonus with the fire and the offensive, and the defensive and the water get the minus. And this is also existing on the board itself. The number of cards is mainly built that you can def defend the most of them with offensive and fire, and that's the reason why it's existing most. But not in all cases. In some cases, which are more valuable, maybe you need some of the others. My hero have reached the mausoleum. The mausoleum is a da more dangerous area than others. Here I have to get four encounter cards. And the interesting part is somebody, some other player will set the row and the, the uh, sequence of cards I will encounter here. Currently, I have these cards in hand, and I don't know what's going around, but if I can do all of the four encounter cards I get here from him, I can put one of my cubes to the mausoleum, and this is completed for me. I can do this several times, but even one is a good choice. The first one, the first encounter I have, is a challenge by the gods. They ask if I have either offensive or fire card, and I have a fire card at hand, and I can keep it, because the challenge only asks for this. The next sequence is, oh, a harpy, fire, level 3. That's a bit more tricky. I can try out how to get this around, and I think there's only one possibility only. I can choose the water to support with the defensive card, which is permitted by this card here. Water I can sub, uh, support by another card. Gives a le level of water 3, and this should be sufficient. It's magic, gives one bonus of 1, and it's water, gives also one bonus of 1. Actually, it's, it's, it's a level of 5, that's actually an overshot. Maybe I can do this, I can keep this maybe also and uh, put away the offensive card. It's easier. Then I draw two cards afterwards to have Three cards again in hand, and I try, of course, the next one. Oh, a mummy. It's an offensive mummy, a level of three again, same bonus because I'm still in the desert, and I think I can match this as well. This time I have to consider either I will do this one here with two water, getting water two, but I think in the desert I can have good use of these water cards, so I will do it that way. It's actually also overshot as before, but I will do this. There's only one card remaining, and I can keep one of these cards in my draw pile to make sure if I lose this one, I still get some loot, I still get rewards. But I will do both to be more flexible. Um, maybe let's see, let's see what's coming up. A harpy with water, uh, that's rather uncommon in the desert. Water is not so frequently they uh, encountered. Uh, this will be a bit more tricky. As a matter of fact, I cannot do it only that way and have an equal result. I have one, still one battle card in hand. I get rewards, that's important. But this is only equal, so this I don't get. So I don't get the reward for that. It's off. And I have still one battle card and get now a lot of reward here. That's it. 4, 7, and 5 or 12. And the bad part for me, the good one for the other gamer who selected this card for me is he can choose one of the rewards for himself as well. So he should have some interest that I get at least one card. Of course, he will take the mummy because it's the most reward. That's how the cards, how the locations are managed. 
If I do this, I can put my cube on that. In this case, I didn't. But I can limp home with one card in the hand. I have to consider how to get back to the village. Let's talk about how to win the game. You see the Road of Fame. And the Road of Fame is actually the one where you win when you are most advanced at the end of the game. The end of the game starts when one passes this field here or get on the field 54. Then the game is only for three more rounds going on and everyone has to choose his next steps very carefully. You have seen also the task cards, which are different from appeals and missions. Missions are like this one here, and these are special for only one player. And he get a minus if he gets the cards. By some cards of the skill cards, he gets his cards, so it's actually a minus. But if he can achieve to do this, for example, the red one here is already in the deep caves, he can put a, a, bone, a marker on, and later on at the end of the game, he get bonus for that instead of, of, a, of a malus. But here in this case, we can see these are the tasks which have to be fulfilled. And the tasks define also a possibility to start the end game. If somebody, one, sorry, if one of them have already three tasks fulfilled, the end game is also started independent if there's somebody on this field 45 already. Then it's only three more turns and then the counting gets up who is most advanced. There are two other conditions how somebody can win. If one is about, no not is about, if one has the possibility to put on five task cards, which might have also other in possibly, uh, put five task cards his marker on because he fulfills the condition then he immediately win. Or the third possibility to win is getting this card, the D card of the skill cards. Actually, there's only one D card existing and you can only purchase it or achieve it when you have already eight skill cards. Then you need, furthermore, 16 loot, which is a lot. And if you get these as well, you make a big build, a big sacrifice to the gods, and they kind of say only, oh, this is a big one, this is a great one, here have won. And that's actually also a death condition, immediately win condition, which can also uh, cut out the game, even if it is not passed by the end game. But this is the most rare condition to win the game. It's the most satisfactory, I have to say as well. Yes, I've explained most of the mechanics which are about to run this game. Still, this is a basic game. In the full game, there are some more features in. I have some items, some artifacts can be won if you do the right tasks. The creatures might be different. Maybe something like that with the harpy which has no bonus at all or some, something like that with the, with the lion which is in, actuating a in special challenge in ahead. Something like that. So it makes these things more complicated a bit. But I think also more interesting. Additionally, I have to say this what you see here is of course all prototype material. This is not the end material we like to have. We want to have it in a, this way or better. Much better we want to have it. As a, as a matter of fact, also the this, this figures are not the end figures, I have to say. So, this is what you want to improve with you together. We think it's a good game. We are happy with that. We have had a lot of hours with fun with this game. And I think this is a thing, something I like to share with you. And please support us if you can think about that. Thank you.